Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Strat Baseball History. My name is Joe, and we're here with another game from our 1962 replay. Today we have the both. The both? How about just both? Today we have both expansion teams. It's going to be the Houston Colt 45s, later known as the Astros, visiting the New York Mets. The Astros, uh, or Colt 45s, I should say, currently matching their real-life record at 4-3 and three in our replay. The Mets, who started 0-6 in real life, uh, are 3-3, three and three, so they're playing uh, pretty well early on. Uh, so both expansion teams uh, off to a good start. Um, on the mound for Houston, we have Turk Farrell. And on the mound for the Mets, Roger Craig. The Houston lineup today is going to be Bob Lillis at short, leading off. He usually bats in the eighth spot, but Al Spangler is taking a day off, so Lillis will be playing. Joey Almalfitano at second base and batting second. Roman Mejias playing right field and batting third. Carl Warwick in left field and batting cleanup. Bob Aspromonte playing third and batting fifth. The catcher, Hal Smith, batting sixth. Pidge Brown playing first base and batting seventh. And Al Heist in center field and batting eighth, getting his first start of the season. So, Norm Larker is still unavailable for the Astros. One more game, he'll be back from injury. Meanwhile, I keep saying Astros, Colt 45s. The team later known as the Astros. Meanwhile, for the Mets, the lineup is uh, pretty familiar. Richie Ashburn uh, leading off in right field. The Ilio Chacon, the shortstop, batting second. Felix Mantilla at third and batting third. Frank Thomas, the big slugger in left field, batting fourth. Marv Thronberry batting fifth and playing first. Charlie Neal back from a 10-game injury. Uh, no, not 10-game. Three-game injury, batting sixth and playing second. Um... Choo Choo Coleman, the catcher, batting seventh, and Jim Hickman playing center, batting eighth. Roger Craig, of course, the pitcher, will be batting ninth. So, without further ado, play ball. I wish we had an older picture of Shea Stadium without the new city field being built in the background, but we don't right now. But Craig is on the mound. He's 0 and 1 on the season, a 9 ERA and 5 innings pitched in his first start. He's going to face off against Bob Lillis to lead things off. Lillis, 261 so far in uh, 23 at-bats. No homers, no runs batted in. The pitch is a 4-4. Four, four. That's a fly ball toward Hickman in center. Hickman's a 2. We roll a 2. And that means an out. So Hickman roams over, makes the play for the first out of the inning and the game. So Lillis... Trots back to the dugout, and Joey Amalfitano coming to the plate. Amalfitano batting 192, uh, no homers and two runs batted in so far, and 26 at-bats. The pitch to Amalfitano is a 2, a 4. He pops this one up on the infield, uh, over toward short and third. Mantia calls off Chacon, and he'll be there to make the play. They'll pop out to the third baseman, Mantia, for the second out, and Houston is down to their last out already in the first. That brings up Roman Mejias. He's batting a solid 333, one home run, four RBIs, and 30 at bats thus far this year. That's a 2 3. He pops this one up on the infield, also over toward Mantilla, who makes the play for the third out to retire the side. So a 1 2 3 inning for Roger Craig against the Colt 45s here in the first, and the Mets to bat against Turk Farrell. G. Ashburn to lead off against Turk Farrell, who's also making his second start of the season. He's 1-0 for the Colt 45s with a 2.25 ERA. He went 8 in his first outing and allowed just two runs. He'll face off against Ashburn, as we said. Uh, 16 at-bats, 375, a triple homer, and two runs batted in uh, on the early 62 replay. The pitch to Ashburn, 110, and Richie goes right back up the middle with a base hit. A leadoff single for Ashburn. And a quick adjustment to our ballpark locations is necessary. How do I change the runner? Runner first base. I'd like his Y coordinates to be a little higher. Well, that's too high. As Ashburn's now in the sky above the above the uh, <clears throat> above the field. Um, let's see. How do we do? 
Well, not 32. How about it was three? Uh, how about 320? Oh, still too high. 330? Nope. 340. Perfect. Oh, well, Ashburn on first. And now he's really on first, folks. And Ilio Chacon coming up. Chacon, a 273 hitter. No homers, two runs batted in, and 22 at bats. Ashburn is a B stealer, so today he would have a 1 to 11 chance being held. Um. Yeah, we're going to hit and run with Chacon. And that's a 9 on the hit and run. Swing and a miss. Ashburn is off to the races, trying to steal second on the bus to hit and run. And a 12, when his chance was 1 to 11, uh, Smith guns down to Amalfitano and gets him. A 2 4 court stealing for Ashburn for the first out of the inning for New York. And Chacon steps back in the box to face Farrell the old fashioned way. A 4 6 means Farrell paints the corner. Strikes out Ilio Chacon for the second out of the inning. It's going to bring up Mantia, who's 240, one home run, four runs batted in, in 25 at bats so far. And that's a 2-7. Luffs this one out toward Carl Warwick in left. Warwick will come over and make the catch to retire Mantia for the third out. So the Mets send three to the plate. All three are retired in one form or another. And there's no score after one. Roger Craig back on the mound. He'll face Warwick, who made the final out of the inning. Warwick, a solid start so far. 273, two homers, three runs batted in. Carl batting about the way the Astros would expect him through for most of the season, if they were the Astros. They're the Colt 45s, and we'll see how that goes. I don't know why I want them to be the Astros so bad today. Probably because I just woke up from a nap. The pitch from Craig to Warwick is a 2-5. That's a walk, so Warwick will be on as the leadoff man. And Bob Aspromonte comes to the plate. Aspromonte, 214, one homers, and uh, three runs batted in so far. Craig deals, it's a 2-7. A fly ball out toward Thomas in left. Big Frank will have no problem with this one and takes it like a can of corn from the top shelf for the first out. Warwick returns to first. Al Smith coming up, the catcher, 182, no homers, no runs batted in, and 11 at bat so far. Craig pitches to him, and that's a 1-8. This is going to be a grounder down to Mantia at third. He scoops it up, fires to Neal at second, and on to Thromberry at first to complete the double play to get out of the inning. So, Craig faces the minimum again. Despite a base runner getting on, nobody left for the Astros. Still no score as the Mets... Come to bat. I guess we're just going to call them the Astros from now on. <clears throat> They've been the Astros their entire my entire life. You'll see Big Frank Thomas's picture there. That's a problem. We're using a generic picture set. If you've seen the previous Houston video, you'll know that obviously the Chicago White Sox Frank Thomas did not pay for, play for the 1962 New York Mets, but that's the first picture that pulls up when we do this uh, this particular picture set. So. In any case, Thomas comes to bat. He's uh, 435, no home runs, 7 RBIs. Maybe it is the big hurt with those kind of stats early on. He'll lead off against Farrell, and here's the pitch. A 1-5, and he's down on strikes. Nice pitch by Farrell to get Thomas swinging. Thromberry up next. Marv is uh, 095 on the season, uh, 1 for 21 so far. Excuse me, 2 for 21 so far. One home run and one run batted in. Marv would like to get his season uh, off to a better start. Uh, four, eight. That's not going to help. That's another strikeout for Farrell. And that's two outs for the Mets here in the second. And here's Charlie Neal. Back from uh, a few games of injury. He's got seven at-bats so far on the season. Four for seven. Excuse me, three for seven. Uh, no home runs, three RBIs. And a six, a seven. Means Neal flies out to Warwick and left to end uh, the inning. So after two innings, no score. And the Astros will return to bat.
Brings up Pidge Brown for the Astros. 0 for 3 in limited play so far this year. Craig pitches. That's a 5-7. Brown gets a hold of this one. He drives it out toward the wall and left. Thomas is going to have to go back on it. He's at the warning track, and on a 1-4, it's a home run. Otherwise, Thomas makes the catch. It's a 4! Thomas jumps, but it's just past his glove, and Pidge Brown has put the Colt 45s on the board with an opposite field home run. Opposite fielder here against Roger Craig. That one just seemed to keep on going, folks. And the Colt 45s have jumped out to a one nothing lead here in the third. That'll bring up center fielder Al Heist. Heist making his first appearance of the season for the Colt 45s. A 6-7. He chops this one toward the gap between Thomas and Hickman. A double 1 to 11, single 12 to 20. It's a 20, so Hickman gets over and cuts it off. He'll hold Heist to just a one base hit. But Heist has a hit in his first appearance of the year. It's going to bring up the pitcher, Farrell. Farrell's going to try to sacrifice Heist over to second. And he's going to do that. A 3 on the sacrifice. He's going to beat the bunt out, too. A hell of a bunt down the third base line. Uh, by Turk Farrell. And now it's first and second, nobody out. And Craig's in a little bit of trouble. Bob Lillis coming up. And Lillis is going to try to sacrifice both runners over this time. He drops this one down uh, the third base line. That's a five. And uh, Craig over quickly to pick it up. Fires to Thronberry at first. Oops. And get the batter. But everybody else is going to move up, so that's a one, a three. Really good sacrifice for Lillis. And now there's two Astros in scoring position with just one out. Amalfitano coming to the plate. 0 for 1 on the day. He'd love to get a base hit here. He's also a bunt threat. The infield is in. <laughs> Try to cut off the run early. And Amalfitano will be swinging away. It's a 6-5. Amalfitano goes deep. This one's back, way back by the foul pole. Is it fair or foul? Fair ball, a three-run home run for Joey Amalfitano, his first of the year. Off of Craig's pitcher card. And Amalfitano circles the bases. The Astros slash Colt 45s now lead 4 to nothing. 4 to nothing. Words are hard. Here's Roman Mejias coming up, as Roger Craig's in a little bit of trouble. Just one out here in the third. Four runs already in. At least the bases are empty. Craig pitches to Mejias. It's a 4-7. And he buckles down and gets him swinging for the second out of the inning. A strikeout of Mejias. Craig's showing he still has some life in his arm. Wondering if uh, he's going to make it through this inning. Well, now he's got to face Warwick, who's 0 for 1, uh, who's walked on the day. <clears throat> a 5, 10 is a ground ball catcher's card. X, Coleman's a 4. Throw a 17 on the 4. That's going to be an out. So Coleman out to pick it up and uh, throw down to Throneberry at first to retire Warwick. But the Colt 45s pick up four big runs. And now lead the Mets 4 nothing as we head for the bottom of the third. The bottom of the order coming up for New York. Farrell back on the mound. He'll pitch to Choo Choo Coleman. And that's a 3 11. A chopping grounder down to short. Lillis will be over. He picks it up and fires to Brown at first to retire Coleman for the first out. Here's Jim Hickman. Hickman 4 12 on the season. Uh, one home run, one run batted in. A good start for Jim. 3-4. This time, though, Farrell's got him swinging. He paints the corner. Hickman couldn't get the bat off his shoulder on the 3-2 count, and he sits down. So here comes Roger Craig. Trailing 4 nothing, but it's only the third, so Craig will bat. And a 2-7. The curveball gets Craig swinging, and he's down on strikes. So the Mets go 1-2-3 against Farrell, who's pitching a shutout through three. And his team scored four to back him and leads 4 nothing. Colt 45's coming back up here in the fourth with Aspermonte, Smith, and Brown. Here's Aspermonte, 0 for 1 on the day so far. A 1-7, he pops this one up on the infield. Another pop out over towards Mantilla at third. 
And Felix will have no problem with it. One down. Aspermonte retired. And Hal Smith to the plate. Smith 0 for 1. A 2, uh, 7. There's a chopping ground ball. A hard grounder toward Mantia. He scoops it and fires to first. Thronberry makes the catch to retire Smith for the second out. And here's Pidge Brown, who started things off last inning with an opposite field solo home run. Craig pitches. It's a 6 and 9. And this time Brown lines it right toward Neal at second. Neal's going to make the catch on a single 1 to 13 line out otherwise. So a line out to Charlie Neal at second base for the third out. And Craig does good work coming back and putting up a zero after that four run inning. It's still four nothing, but at least he didn't roll over and give up the ghost. So Farrell back on the mound for the Colt 45s. He's going to face Ashburn Shacona Mantia, the top of the order for New York. He's faced the minimum number of batters through three so far. There's a four, eight, and he's going to continue that trend against Ashburn as he strikes him out. Curveball that caught the corner, and Ashburn can't believe it, but he'll take the slow walk back to the dugout, and Chacon will come to the plate. Chacon 0 for 1 on the day. About a 5 8. That's a grounder toward Lillis at short. He's a 5 and a shortstop 3. Lillis will make the play and uh, throw out Chacon for the second out of the inning. So Ilio Chacon goes down, and here's Mantia, 0 for 1. Got a runaway die. At least once again, folks. Wouldn't want to change tradition on you. Well, that's going to be a 4 4. And this one's a chopping grounder toward Amalfitano. Joey grabs it on the third bounce and throws over for the final out. So the Mets again go down 1 2 3. Carl having an easy time of it so far. And uh, the 45s. Of Houston, leading 4 nothing as we go to the fifth. Here's Al Heist, singled in his first at bat, his first at bat of the season. Back in the third inning, he'll lead off the fifth here, and a 6-4. It's going to be a hard hit ball right toward Thronberry, and Thronberry sticks out his glove and catches the ball to retire Heist for the first out. That brings Farrell to the plate. He's one for one. Beat out the bunt single his last time up. This time a 5-9. A grounder towards short and Julio uh, Chacon ranging over. A 7 on a shortstop. For Chacon boots it. He can't get it. He knocks it over toward Mantilla at third, who finally picks it up and doesn't have a throw. So that's going to be a one-base error on Julio Chacon. And Turk Farrell down at first base. One out, one on for the Colt 45s. And here's Lillis. Lillis, a 2-6. He gets a hold of this one. Chops it. Tomahawks it out towards uh, Hickman in center. That might be past him. No, it gets down in front of him. Hickman able to run past it and corral it. He's going to hold uh, Lillis to a single, but Farrell is all the way over to third. And the 45 threatening now with uh, runners at the corners and just one down for Amalfitano. Infield's going to come in to try to cut off any further runs, and because of Malfitano is a, a lay down a bunt threat, but with a four run lead, he's probably hitting away. How about a 5 10 catcher's card X? That's going to be a roll on Coleman, who's a four. A 10 on the catcher's four is safe on an error dribbler. So a chopper in front of the plate, Coleman can't find the handle. Everybody's going to be safe. And the run will score. So 5 nothing Colt 45s over in New York right now. And uh, Roger Craig not liking his odds today. It's going to bring up Roman Mejias with uh, Lillis at second and Malfitano at first. Mejias 0 for 2 so far today. Roger Craig deals. That's a 6-8. And that's a base hit. Lillis is going to round a third. And they're waving him home. A 1-15 to chance for Lillis to score. And he is gunned out. Thomas got that in quickly. And the throw was right on the money. To retire Lillis at home. 
On the Heas with a base hit, Lillis retired for the second out on the tag by Coleman at the plate. And Warwick coming up now with two down and two on. The pitch from Craig gets a 1-8. Warwick gets a hold of this one, folks. This is a deep drive out toward the left center field alley. Thomas and Hickman both roaming back. Doesn't look like either one of them is going to get it. The only question is, is it far enough? On a 1-17, it is a home run for Carl Warwick. Three more runs for the Colt 45s. And Roger Craig shaking his head. It's now 8 to nothing. Houston. Well, the Mets fans are not happy today. But they'll support their expansion team anyway. And giving Craig a big hand as the manager goes out. Talks to him for a minute and lets him keep the ball, folks. Believe it or not, he's going to try to get through Aspermonte and get out of the fifth at least. The pitch to Aspermonte, a 1-7. He pops this one up on the infield. Mantia takes it and the Colt 45s are finally retired. We send seven men to the plate, score four. And lead by eight runs as we go to the bottom of the fifth. So Frank Thomas will lead off for New York here in the bottom of the fifth. He's 0 for 1 against Turk Farrell, who's got a one-hitter going through four. That's a 2-8, and Frank Thomas had enough of that. Jack Farrell hung that curveball, and Thomas turned it around in a big way. A huge home run to dead center field for Frank Thomas. Give the Mets a little bit of life here. They now trail 8-1. to one. Thomas rounds the bases quickly. He's not celebrating down by 7. That brings up Marv Thornberry, 0 for 1 on the day. How about a 1-7? Hard grounder. Toward Brown, he ranges into the hole, picks it, and flips to Farrell. At first for the first out. So one down for New York, and here's Charlie Neal. Neal flew out his first time up. 1-4. This time he's going to ground out to the shortstop Lillis who takes his time and throws to Pidge Brown for the second out. That brings up Choo Choo Coleman. Also 0 for 1 on the day is Coleman, a 6-8. Pops this one up straight up on the infield, and Lillis will roam over, like most of my fielders do, and take it for the third out of the inning. So the Mets get the big run, not really, on the Frank Thomas home run, but they still trail by 7, 8-1 to 1 as we go to the sixth. Craig coming out for the sixth. Despite the big uh, deficit, trying to eat some innings for his ball club here. Al Smith ready to go. It's, uh, he's 0-2 on the day. A 6-8 is a base hit. And now the bullpen's active as Craig visibly sweating out there. Pitch Brown to the plate. Smith not a th stealing threat at first. One on and nobody out. Craig with the 2-5. Uh, That's a line drive toward Neal at second. It's a single on a 1-2. Otherwise, Neal catches it. The 6. That's Charlie Neal. Uh, catches the liner for the first out of the inning. Now, Heist do up next. Heist 1 for 2. And a 4-6 uh, is the result. A pop-up on the shortstop. Chacon will be over. And record the out against Heist. For the second out of the inning. That's the pitcher Farrell. He's one for two, but he's reached both times. Once on a single, once on an error. The 3-7 is a strikeout from Craig. So Craig does get through uh, the sixth inning. He's due up here, so that's why they kept him in. They didn't want to waste too many pitchers or pinch hitters, and they didn't want to waste too many innings. They'd like to see their comeback start here with Hickman, a pinch hitter for Craig, and Ashburn in the bottom of the sixth. Jim Hickman looking like Joe Girardi's confused younger brother in that picture. Farrell ready to pitch to Hickman, who's 0-1 on the day. 4-11. 
Hickman makes contact, shoots it out to the opposite field, uh, Mejias. Mejias has a beat on it. He's a right field three, and we roll a seven. And he's going to make the catch for the first out. So an F9 uh, to retire Hickman, and that's going to be Craig's part. In the batting order coming up, we're going to have a pinch hitter for Roger Craig. Craig, eight runs allowed in six innings. I don't think they were all earned, but still, not a good outing for Roger. He'll do a much better job later as the manager for the San Francisco Giants. Let's see who the Mets are going to send up to hit. Try to give their guys who are taking a day off a real day off today, so... You're going to give Cliff Cook an at-bat. With a whole lot not at stake here, Cliff Cook will come out and uh, get an at-bat. Make the change in the game. Mm -hmm. So Cook will bat ninth for Craig. He's uh, 0 for 4 on the year so far. About a 3-9, and he's 0 for 5, folks, as uh, Farrell strikes him out. Two down for the Mets here in the sixth. And Ashburn comes up. A 111. There's a base hit for Richie. The veteran. Finding ways to get it done. His second hit on the day. And he'd be a 1 to 11 stealing. Should Cone do up? No reason to steal with a seven run deficit, folks. Unless you're just looking to pad your stats. And 1 to 11 is not a padded stat moment either. So, foul ready. He pitches to Chacon. It's a 1-4. Ground ball down toward Lillis. He scoops it up and fires over to Brown to retire the side. So the Mets go down 1-2-3-4. Uh, As Hickman had the base hit, they leave one. And uh, the Colt 45 is going to come back to the mound. I wonder if the Mets are losing today. They've been playing both the Colt 45s and the Astros. It's tough when you're uh, in a two-on-one situation. And Bob Moorhead will be the new pitcher for the Mets. We get our bookkeeping in order here. Cook's going to come in. Excuse me. Moorhead's going to come in for Cook. Cook's going to go... Uh, Take the rest of the day off after his unsuccessful pinch hitting opportunity. And where's Moorhead? There he is, all the way at the bottom. So Moorhead ready to pitch to Lillis, who's one for two on the day here in the seventh. Colt 45s lead by a lot. It's a 6 8 fly ball out to left. Thomas is there, and that's one down. Warhead wastes no time. The pitch to Amalfitano is a 1-8. Another fly ball out toward Franken left. Almost identical to the last one, and he takes care of it for the second out. So two quick outs here for the Colts 45s, and Moorhead faces Mejias, who's one for three today. How about a 4-7? That's a liner toward third. Single on a 1-14, otherwise an out. It's past Mantia into the outfield for a base hit. So Mejias has himself a base hit. He's a B stealer. Thinks he's 1 to 12 to go here, and Carl Warwick comes to the plate with two outs. He's 1 for 2 with a big three run home run his last time up. Moorhead delivers. It's a 2 7. And he got under it this time. Another pop up over toward third, and Mantia takes it, puts it away. So the Colt 45s don't score in the seventh. They leave one. Moorhead does a good job, and. Uh, it's going to be Mantia, who made the last out of the inning, coming up to have the first at bat against Farrell in the seventh. Mantia 0 for 2, the pitch from Farrell, it's a 6 7. Another fly ball out toward left, this time Carl Warwick doing things. All the balls hit in the air today have been hit hard out toward left field, folks. Those left fielders have been busy. They put a lot of miles on that track. Mantia is out for the first out, and here's Thomas, who did homer his last time up. Time of 5-5. Five, five. And he might have done it again, folks. Home run 1-10, double 11-20. This one's out toward left center. 
And it's off the wall. I'm just going to cruise into second with a double. His second extra base hit. And as many at bats, he's two for four on the day now. And Throneberry comes to the plate. 0 for 2. 2, 8. That's a double 1 to 2, single 3 to 20. This one gets down in front of Heist. That's going to be a base hit. He fields it. But Thomas is going to come around uh, to score as the throw comes into second. Holds Throneberry at first with a single, but he's got an RBI. And now it's 8 2, uh, Houston over New York. So Throneberry down at first, and here's Charlie Neal. Neal 0 for 2 on the day against Farrell. A 1-9. That's a hard liner toward third. Aspermonte probably has it, unless it's a 1. And he does indeed make the catch on the liner from Neal for the second out of the inning. You know, the Mets have one on, two outs, one run in. And here's uh, Choo Choo Coleman. 0 for 2 today is the catcher. And the old 6-12. Uh, it's a ground ball uh, toward Brown at first. He's going to pick it up and uh, flip to the pitcher to retire the side. Uh, Turk Farrell has a relief rating of zero, one of the few notes I make on my cards. In pencil, mind you. So that 6-12 does not threaten him with an injury. He can only be injured at bat in this replay. All right, folks, we go to the eighth. It's going to be Aspermonte leading off for... Uh, the Colt 45s against Bob Moorhead. Moorhead in his second inning of work. He's got no record so far, a 3.00 ERA, after six innings of work, including the inning in this game. And Aspermonte is 0 for 3 on the day. A 5-5. Five, five. Not anymore. He's not a home run 1-19, to triple 20. This one's hit toward uh, deep left center. And it'll go over the fence. Plenty of room to spare for a home run. So the Colts 45s get that run right back and now lead 9-2. to two. Aspermonte with a big leadoff solo home run. And Hal Smith to the plate. One for three on the day. This one pretty much out of reach for New York. He lines this one uh, toward Chacon at short. We end up with a cock die and Chacon snares it. Makes the catch. 1 to 15, and that was going past him into the outfield, folks, but he leaped up and pulled it out of the air. That brings up Pidge Brown with one out. Pidge is homered today. A 5, a 4. Catcher's card X. Choo Choo Coleman is a 4. We roll a 17. That's a wild pitch. Nobody on, so it doesn't matter. Followed by a foul out to Coleman himself. So Brown's the second out. With one run in, nobody on, and Al Heist coming up. Heist one for three with a run scored today. Four, eight, looking like a bank robber in that picture, and he draws a walk. So Heist on at first. And if we can get his card moved, it's going to be Turk Farrell making another appearance. He's one for three today, a single, reached on an error, and struck out. Moorhead delivers to Farrell. It's a 3-3. Three, uh, three. And that's going to be another strikeout. That is not a strikeout. Let's go fix that. So Farrell down on strikes for the third out. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. New York trailing by seven. Farrell back on the mound. Probably going to try to finish this one with a big lead unless he gets in some real trouble. And he'll face Jim Hickman, who's 0 for 2 on the day. How about a 6-12? Grounder to first. No problem for Brown. He flips to Farrell, and they retire Hickman. Here's Moorhead, getting a rare at bat for the relievers. 5-10. Going to be a catcher's card, X. Smith is a 4. The bat's pretty much conceding by batting Moorhead here. Their bullpen is a little worn out. 10 on a 4 is actually going to be safe. Moorhead will reach on the error as Smith bobbles the ground ball. So Moorhead's on, and Richie Ashburn coming up. Ashburn a couple of base hits today. 6-7 is a fly out to left. What's going on? Warwick makes the play for the second out. 
And that brings up Chacon with Morehead at first and two down. How about a 3-6? And Chacon strikes out. So Morehead reaches on the error. He's left on base. The Mets don't score again. And uh, it's 9-2 to two as we go to the ninth. Morehead coming out for his third inning of work. He will face the top of the order, Lillis, Amalfitano, and Mejias. Here's Lillis. The 3-9 is a grounder to short. Chacon over to Throneberry for the first out. Here's Amalfitano, Moorhead working quickly with the big lead. 6-9 is another grounder to short, this time an X row reading, 11 out of 4. Out with no runners on base. The 6-3 to three to retire Amalfitano. And here's Mejias. Two singles his last two time ups. Time's up two for four on the day. How about a six five? That's a strikeout. So Moorhead getting through the inning. One, two, three. And the Mets hoping for a miracle rally here in the ninth. Down by seven. Against Turk Farrell, who's allowed just five hits and two runs on the day. He's going to come out and try to complete this one. Against the heart of the Mets order, Mantia, Thomas, and Throne Mary. Here's Mantia for three on the day. A 3-10. And he's got himself a leadoff base hit. So Mantia down at first, and here's Thomas, who's doubled and homered in his last two at-bats. Farrell, the pitch. 6-8. Pops him up on the infield. Uh, Lillis will come over at short and make the play for the first out. That brings up Throneberry. One for three on the day. One RBI. Knocked in one of the two Mets runs. It's a 1-9. And he's down on strikes, is Throneberry. Swung over the top of that one. Good movement on the fastball late in the game for Farrell. And that brings up Charlie Neal. 0 for 3 in his first game back from a mild injury. A 6-8. Going to be a pop-up on the infield. Uh, Lillis will roam over. We've had a lot of pop-ups today, folks. And Lillis takes this one for the final out. So Charlie Neal goes down. The Mets go down. And the final score here is the Houston Colt 45s 9, the New York Mets 2. Roger Craig is going to take the loss for New York. He falls to 0-2 on the season. Turk Farrell goes to 2-0 on the season. Completes this game and has a 2.12 ERA to go with that nice record. The Astros improve? improve? No, they improve. They improve to 5-3, and three. the Mets fall to 3-4, and four. and they will do it again tomorrow, folks. For the Astros home runs by Amalfitano, Warwick, Aspermonte, and Brown, four homers on the day, the Mets had a home run from Frank Thomas, who drove in his eighth run. So that's our ball game for today, folks. This is Joe for Strat Baseball History, reminding you that you can watch the entire or follow the entire 1962 replay at www.stratbaseballhistory.com. Till next time, remember it's always a good day for baseball. I hope you have a good night, and I'll see you soon.